This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. More about that in a short story later. If you don't know this channel by now, firstly, that's a real shame. Secondly, it seems I spend as much time looking back as I do looking forward. After a one-off vlog in 2017, there are now 50 of the things. Terrier Travels has become such a fun time capsule to look back on, spiralled from some silly outings to go and chase trains. To celebrate, let's look back once more on some of the best railway moments I can remember. Rare instances of being in the right place at the right time, steam in unusual locations, and just some happy moments in what is an innocent and very nerdy hobby, but one that often ends up being full of surprises. Number 10. First up, we have steaming to the top of a mountain. Snowdon Mountain Railway isn't the only steam-powered rack railway in the world, but it's still absurd to be able to take the train to the summit of Mount Snowdon. Sadly, the railway is more corporately run, and there's more diesel and hybrid services than steam, but many years ago, I did get to travel with number three. The carriage is propelled up and isn't fully coupled, so you really hear and feel the power of the engine as it climbs. The steepest gradient is 1 in 5.5 metres, and it's no wonder the smoke boxes are so grey and burnt. It's rare to have a completely clear day at the 1085 metre summit, but on the train it can be just as fun ascending into the clouds. The Summit Cafe is a welcome shelter when the wind is strong, but in all weathers you do get spectacular views. It's very clear to see the influence for the railway series book Mountain Engines, with the illustrations and engines matching up perfectly with the real things. I do feel sorry for the firemen and anyone who doesn't want to go deaf. But as a passenger, the mountain railways of the world are certainly a wonder. And now, a short story to tell you about today's sponsor. Oi, you. What's the quickest way off this island in a hurry? Something that doesn't involve trains, please. Oh, so you want to change your location? Well, the best way is with Surfshark VPN. Uh, I don't think you get it. My mate Jerry has accidentally been shipped off to America in a crate of onions. Don't ask. So it's the US of A you're after. With Surfshark, you can change your online location so you can access restricted content in over a hundred other countries. What sort of restricted content are we talking here? Well, whilst you're looking for your friend, you could be enjoying Netflix shows that are blocked in your country, so you don't miss out on what they've got. Uh, I'm sort of on the run. I don't really have time well, to... Well, if you're wanting to keep hidden, Surfshark will keep your data encrypted when you're on public Wi-Fi, so nobody will see what you're doing. You keep your browsing secrets, you cheeky model man, you. <laughs> That, I like the sound of. How's this going to help me get Jerry back though? Because it means you can shop on sites that offer things cheaper than where you are. So? So, I could change my location to wherever them crates of onions are being sold to and buy Jerry back? Hmm, that plan has a few layers. I'm not sure Jerry's worth the hassle. Well, if you use the code STEPNY FREE by following the link in the description, you'll get three extra months for free. You'll also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Three months free? Three months free. By using the code STEPNY FREE. STEPNY FREE. And a 30-day money-back guarantee. 30-day money-back guarantee. So click the link in the description. Uh, yes. Well, all right then. Thank you, Surfshark. Hold on to those onions, Jerry. John is on the way. <laughs> I didn't think it was actually going to sink. I'm never going by boat again. Number 9. Thomas on stage. 
Now, this one isn't a true railway, but the James Prop won a Guinness World Record for largest battery controlled model engine, and they run on some form of track. It's my list, I decide what rolls. <laughs> Until I released a video with a snippet of footage my family filmed, completely legally, I had no idea how few Thomas fans had actually got to see these shows. We bought tickets when I was very young, and then someone else gave us tickets they won in a competition. But even though I got to see it twice, I only remember fragments. Someone has kindly uploaded one of the revised shows in full, and the Bluey 2 has done a great video talking about them. This is probably nostalgia talking, but this was a very special show. They don't make them like that anymore. The animatronics were a bit scary, but this is the closest we got to the classic series being adapted for the stage, like Mike O'Donnell mentioned he wanted to happen. Sadly, the props are either destroyed or have been bought by random companies, so this sort of thing is never to be repeated again. Quite a few people have asked me about this, so I'll mention it here. All I remember is being scared of this one scene where Percy goes into the tunnel on one side and James on the other. I thought it was Gordon, but it can't be because he barely moves on the stage. They crash in the tunnel and part of it starts collapsing. No doubt it's Thomas who goes in and rescues them or something. This could be me misremembering because I was still very young, but to see anything remotely railway related on stage like this is something that stayed with me. Number 8. Underground Steam This is one of those novelties that I never thought would actually be allowed in the modern day and indeed it's something that we are increasingly unlikely to see ever again. For the 150th anniversary of the Metropolitan Line in 2012, I went to London to meet Met 1, Thero Siddons and coaches from the Bluebell Railway and London Transport Museum, as they weaved their way under the capital. We constantly hear of the pressures for steam to keep up with the par things on the main line. So to have a Victorian tank engine belching smoke on one of the busiest metros in the world is phenomenal. Other engines like Prairies and Panniers have also run underground. And in 2019, Met 1 returned to make commuters think that they'd seen a ghost train. Upgrades to signalling and timetables means that this sort of thing is perhaps becoming extinct. But the London Transport Museum still run excursions with their electric stock. Steam at the heart of the big city is something different though. Number 7. Polar Bear's 100th Birthday Sounds like a children's book. And the loco looks like it's from a children's book. 2005 marked 100 years since one of the Grandal Glen Railway's tank engines on the Isle of Man was built. Polar Bear now lives at the Amberley Working Museum in Sussex, so its older sister Sea Lion came to visit. I remember this was just a really fun gala with a model railway exhibition, miniature railway rides, and the whole museum was very active. There's something really sweet about celebrating the birthday of a machine, especially with cake and family visits. As a child, Sea Lion and Polar Bear are just the friendliest looking engines. Immediately after the gala, and I mean immediately, Polar Bear went back to Grandal Glen to repay the visit. I remember driving back home in the dark and we stopped to get petrol. Then on a lorry driving past was Sea Lion and Polar Bear en route to the Isle of Man. I can't find any photos to back this up, but what a quick turnaround since the Locos would still have been in steam. Number 6. 
celebrity chasing on the other side of the world. I almost take for granted living in the country with the most working steam engines, so seeing the likes of Flying Scotsman has almost become a normality. That made it all the more special when I saw the most famous engine in Australia, 3801. To my knowledge, 3801 is just famous for being famous, and its only claim is being the only engine to have visited every state in the country. Still, to be on the line side as this huge express engine thundered past was great. I also got to explore where it was built, in what is the best preserved abandoned railworks I've ever been to. Yes, I've been to more than one. We had no idea what to expect at Everly, so discovering all of the machinery firsthand was surprising. The site has been regenerated into supermarkets and offices, but they've built around the artifacts from the past and left a mini museum in one part where it's still being used as a workshop. Well played, Australia. Well played. Number five, anything goes. The Talislin Railway was bound to come up at some point on this list, and it's difficult to try and narrow gauge down some best moments since I started volunteering there. A definite highlight was the star-aligning occasion when all of their engines were working at the same time. All engines go. Sir Hayden had just returned from an extensive overhaul, and Talus Lynn was just about to leave to be repaired itself, so the railway held a gala where anything went. All steam trains were double-headers, there were goods trains, and unforgettably, there was a big cavalcade of all six steam engines at the end of the day, led by a chorus of nine whistles. There have been several Anything Goes galas since, where the railway will always strive to do something quirky and different, so they're always a laugh. Number four, paddle steaming on the wave, Elise. This isn't a train, no. But PS Waverley was built for the LNER, and I did sail with it to go to the Isle of Wight Steam Railway, so it counts. Anything goes. <laughs> At the time of editing, this happened so recently that it hasn't even made it into a video yet. But in brief, I went to the quay to film the oldest ocean going paddle steamer in the world leaving on a day tripper. When I got there, I was told I couldn't see the ship because it was in an industrial port. But I bumped into someone who happened to be giving away a free ticket because their friend couldn't make it on the voyage. I was meant to be working, but there was no way I could say no to that. Completely unprepared, I set sail with a lucky ticket to ride. Ride as in the Isle of Wight. I even had my bike on board so I could cycle and chase the island steam engines. I could sit being mesmerised by the engine room on Waverley for hours and hearing the whistle as we paddled into the sunset, oh, truly breathtaking. Titanic got me into steamships and it was a breath of fresh air to appreciate maritime history for a change having seen the SS Shield Hall a few days previously, too. Number three, Mayflower on the mainline. As much as possible, I've tried to capture steam engines going beyond the 25 mile an hour limit imposed on all heritage railways. Seeing expresses whiz by at 75 miles an hour and rubbing shoulders with their present day replacements is a thrill. One time, I was fortunate enough to travel on a tour from London to the recently opened mainline connection to Swanage Railway. Our noble steed for the day was B1 Mayflower, and it did not hold back. To look out the window and hear the engine comfortably racing at speed along the coast was an exhilarating way to imagine what it was like traveling on the premier expresses of the past. On the return journey, it was getting dark and there was a thunderstorm right overhead, but very little rain and barely any sound. 
That has become one of those surreal moments that's really stuck with me. Ending the day with Mayflower sitting at the buffer stops at London Victoria. If you haven't done a rail tour yet, I highly recommend it. Number 2. Palace Lynn Audrey Extravaganzas. Probably no surprise to anyone. The Railway Series themed weekend at the Railway, where the Reverend W. Audrey loved and volunteered at, are a definite favourite. Not just because I hosted the live stream at the third one, no. The inner child in me is simply overjoyed at being able to see the original characters I grew up with, like meeting the characters at Disneyland. The faces, the repainted and renamed rolling stock, the original props, illustrations and notes, and being surrounded by people who appreciate it all in the same way. That's what makes it special. And don't get me wrong, being at the Talos Lynn on a normal running day is a must, but so is being on the Scarlowy Railway at a special event like this. Great memories from the great little engines. Before we go to number one, I'll say some honourable mentions, because that's how these kind of videos work, isn't it? Turning up to the Bluebell Railway to get something from the gift shop on my birthday, and Stepney happened to be running on one of its last days. Thanks, Stepney. Multiple times of travelling by train somewhere when a heritage train storms through, including a few times when we're driving and a steam or diesel train passes on a mainline rail tour. You couldn't have planned that if you tried. Being invited into the cab or getting to blow the whistle of an engine. Pure magic every time. Getting to fire Dolgok and climbing Kunful Bank or crossing the viaduct. A pretty specific one, but wow. If that doesn't satisfy all the senses and make you feel like you're part of living history, become a volunteer. It's good. Exploring the line where the Titfield Thunderbolt was filmed. There's a video all about this, but Holly did a magical mystery tour for my birthday, and we got to walk the remains of the Camerton branch with barely any preparation. That made it feel very Duke the Lost Engine, as we discovered all of the different places from the film. A really fun day out considering I didn't know it was going to happen. Number 1. Bluebell Railway's 50th Anniversary Don't worry, Stepney is somewhere properly on this list. This is the event that got me visiting Heritage Railways more often and got me signed up to become a member and volunteer. But I wasn't even supposed to be there. My family had a day out and I knew the railway was on the way back home, but I had no idea that anything was going on. I convinced them to stop at Horster Keynes on the way back, where I had never seen so many people on the platforms. We climbed up to the viewing paddock to find that they were preparing for the big end of gala cavalcade. What fortunate timing. Stepney leading, each engine paraded past individually before they were all coupled up. Blue Circle was visiting and many of the out of use engines were also on display. Then to the rapturous sound of whistles, seven engines steamed past both backwards and forwards. I've searched a thousand times to see if we took any video footage from that day, but all I found is the photos. Even so, it's still crystal clear in my mind. Standard gauge railways in the UK seemed frightened of doing big cavalcades like this, which are of course costly and take time to arrange, but there is no better publicity stunt to show off the engines that people are coming to see. Running an authentic, period accurate service is spot on for the enthusiast but hosting a spectacle like this really does motivate people into the world of railways. As proven. <laughs> there we go, some of my favourite moments from gaining some mileage with steam. 
What are some of your all-time best memories? Leave a comment and make us all smile. Thank you all for staying around for 50 Terrier Travels vlogs. I still don't consider myself to be a vlogger, <laughs> but there's one for each Terrier that was built now, so the numbers say otherwise. If you'd like to help me make more railway memories, then please consider supporting the channel by becoming a patron and following the link in the description. You'll get truckloads of rewards, and I get to keep going out and filming tugs, trains and birds, islands, birthdays and baby trains, Thomas fans, bluebells and cruise ships, canal boats, manors and manors, hedgehogs, top hats and reindeer, squirrels, London and express trains, layouts, couplings and castles, Talislin, waterfalls and whistles, Italy, alpacas and lightning storms, cookies, cap rides and quarries, oil lamps, carpools and cat catchers, fat controllers, chicky monugs and enterprising engines, models, mainlines and rock stars, salty, pullmans and hamsters, ice cream, brunel and branch lines, Scotsmen, goats and Disney, cranes, saints and station masters, Thomases, Percys and ducks, Rocky, sloths and underground steam, Toby, Lego and giraffes, tunnels, trolls and thunderbolts, Rusty, Mario and Big Mickey, props, puppies and giants, signs, sheep and shell phones, landslides, viaducts and faulty fireworks, thunderbirds, teacups and naughty gnomes, chickens, quarantines and haircuts, bridges, beaches and underground bunkers, pets, pandemics and ghosts, peaks, princes and ponies, Audrey's, waves and runaway wagons, dogs, donkeys and top gear, giant balloons, seagulls and stonehenge, hovercrafts, hash browns and terriers, tanks, daisy and deer, panniers, penguins and fairy doors, sodor, geese and eyebrowless ivos, tattoos, centenaries and flog takeovers, geckos, u-boats and pumpkins, prairies, buckets and wisdom trams, hogwarts, harbours and trees, olivers, asmrs and exhibitions, welsh firemen, picnics and perilous tracks, Derek, dinosaurs and aqueducts, James's glaciers and traction engines, Emily's, Arthur's and bullet trains, Garrett's pastors and Australian trains, Incline's bushfires and abandoned freight trains, koalas, Harvey's and static boilers, and presenters, paint jobs and photo charters. And Britannia's stonefish and scary submarines since I've edited that one too. <sighs> so, thank you. Don't forget to get your exclusive Surfshark deal by following the link in the description. And goodbye for now, my dear friends. A big thank you to all of my brilliant patrons. Alex Goodman, GBH Train, D0280 Falcon, Sean Tempest, Nat, Random Thomas Fan, Ego, Insane Edward, Dark White 73, The Sudrian Git, Peter Davenport, and Andrew Diak.